Hello and welcome back. So to begin our lessons, we'll need a few things. So of course you need a browser because we are working with PHP and you will need a text editor. So you can use any text editor of your choice, including Notepad. I, on the other hand, will be using Sublime Text. You can download Sublime Text on the internet. There's a free version, which I'm using right now. And also you need to make sure that ZAMP is installed on your computer. So it might not be ZAMP, it might be WAMP or MAMP, but that's all good. Or you may not have all this installed. As long as you have Apache running and PHP installed, then we are good to go. So just make sure uh, Apache is running. That's all we are going to need. We don't really need MySQL, just Apache is enough. Okay. So let's begin our coding. So what I did is uh, in my ZAMP folder, so this is inside htdocs. This is C ZAMP htdocs or whatever your uh, server folder is. I created a folder called OOP where we're going to be doing our sandboxing or testing our code. We're not going to create uh, usable code from this probably but unless at the end but we're just going to be using this as a sandbox so we can test out a few things okay so i in that folder i just have one text file here and that's to just remind me where i am so don't mind that file but now we'll create a file in there by saying new right click on the folder because I, I dragged and dropped the folder in here in sublime text that's, I, that's why I have this here and I'll just say a new file in here which will be this one so I'll close this old one and that's the file there so I will save this file as the default index.php just for testing purposes right I'll save it there all right so let's begin now the question is why would you want to use objects why would you go for object oriented programming instead of the normal procedural programming that you do uh, on a daily basis well the thing is if your projects begin to become large in size it becomes very difficult to maintain your code in procedural programming so let's say for example you have a website of some kind and your website may have maybe something like 10 pages okay so you think okay this is fine i want to uh i can maintain this website quite all right but as time goes on your website becomes more complex because people ask for more features on your site and then you'll be cutting corners and shortcuts all the time because you want to patch things up as you go so if you have let's say a one page one that does one function okay does a very specific thing you may find that after uh, more pages you are adding you find that certain functionality uh, repeats itself in most of these pages so that would be a candidate what happens then when uh, functions repeat themselves you start creating what are known as functions right so you create functions to, uh, for repeated code. Okay, so you, you create functions for repeated code that helps you to actually organize your work. But in the same way that you need functions when code starts repeating itself, you also need uh, classes when functions begin to repeat themselves. So this is like a step forward from when you are doing things uh, in a procedural way and then you discover that you are repeating yourself and then you start using functions right so you use uh, functions but then now you have to take it a step further where you find that now you have repeated functions so you make classes for repeated functions okay so you create functions for repeated code and then you create classes for repeated functions so this is a step ahead uh, in your code. Now, classes have a lot of advantages over just functions. So for example, uh, let's say you have, um, let, let, let's say you have a page where you, or let's say you are dealing with um, 
what example can I use? Uh, let's say you're dealing with shapes. Let's just imagine you have an app that's dealing with shapes. And then you find yourself writing a function like function uh, calculate, calculate, calculate area like this. Okay. So th this is, uh, this is fine. You know, this is function calculate area. This is all good. But if you have many shapes, okay. So let's say uh, actually calculate is like that, but it doesn't really matter. You find yourself, uh, this is, uh, this is a function. Let's say a function for a circle function for a circle yeah and then you find yourself being uh, repeating this because even a uh, a square has area so you find that you need to write a function that calculates the area but this one is for a circle and this one is for uh, a square now the problem is if you write two functions that are like this that are similar uh, php will throw an error and tell you no this is uh this is not good you can't do this but so what you end up doing is you start writing things like calculate area circle and then you write this one calculate area square like this right now furthermore you find that the most of the functionality in here is repeated kind of similar as what is in here maybe just a few parameters that are different because this is obviously a square and this is a circle right so in such cases you are beginning to repeat yourself in your code so it might be more useful to just put uh, this functionality in classes that way you create a class for example you say class circle like this right so we open and close that bracket here like this so we've put this essentially uh, let me put some tags here just so we can have some basic highlighting uh, there okay and the same way you've done this you can create a class for a square right so this one becomes square like this yes square now at this point you don't need to do this anymore like this you can have calculate area and calculate area again because this is inside another class so this is valid in the same page like this so then you have similar functions here that you don't need to write uh, different function names there so this is more kind of portable and then the another, another advantage of classes is that you don't just put one function here you can put many functions in here and then when you need to use that they become just like one entity and you can carry all that into another piece of code so from one page to another you can just reuse the same class of functions in there or carry it from one project to another so moving from <clears throat> Uh, moving from procedural to object oriented is advantageous because uh, it's advantageous in the same way that it's advantageous to use functions in your normal procedural code. Now, just a step further from functions is classes where you actually group the functions together. So I hope that is making some sense. Okay, so in the next video, we'll look at the four principles of object oriented programming so here we're just looking at why we need to move to OOP and then next we're going to look at what are the principles and what makes it so good all right so I'll see you in the next video